Hi everyone. Um, there was a lo lots of request and uh, lots of confusion among the students. The confusion is regarding how to avoid the silly mistake in examination. So, silly mistakes. Uh, these are something which is very. It's going to be very very crucial at the end of your gate examination. There might be many factors for the silly mistake. Let me uh, let me arrange the factors in a different in a in a in a in a, in a manner such that you could grab the points. So first, write many online tests. You need to write many online tests. You might ask me. I'm you might ask me. I'm writing online tests, but I'm doing silly mistake. That is the problem here, right? I know. The matter of fact is why I'm saying write many online tests because. You need to write many online tests. Then only you will get to know what is the mistake. Without getting to, without knowing what is the mistake, then you cannot correct it, right? So first and foremost test, first and foremost step is to write many, many, many online tests. Do mistakes, do mistake now itself. Correct the mistake, correct the mistake in here itself. When you are going back, when you are going to gate examination, that time you would be very clear about it. So, yeah. Next point, next point regarding when you are writing online test, I will suggest you a few points when you are writing online test. Try to draw the diagram. If for example, if there is any diagram, any circuits, any free body diagram or any diagram regarding the question, try to draw the diagram somewhat bigger. Why I am saying is if you draw a diagram very smaller and smaller and if you want to add any values into the diagram, that time there will be a confusion. Okay. So it is better to draw the diagram bigger so that you can add values into the diagram so that when you are coming back and when you are referring it, that time it will be easier for you, right? Next step, don't take much in your head. What does it mean is, if you are reading one question, concentrate on that question only. You might have read one question, but at that time you might have not known the answer properly. You might have asked, you might have don't know the solution properly. So you might have skipped that question. You might have given marked for review that question and then you would have come for the next question. But when you come to the next question, don't think about that. I left that question. Okay, there is some value. If that value is not there, means I would have found. Don't think like that. Don't think about the last question when you are in this. If you think that, if you think like that, then last question will also be a problem. This question will also be a problem. Here there is a more possible, even though the present question which you are solving even though it is very easy but if you think about the last question this question you will be doing a mistake even though even though the question is, is very easy even though problem is very simple then also when you are solving when you are solving you might think it is a very easy problem i could solve it but when you are solving if you keep on thinking about that then the last when you are keep on thinking about the last problem then this problem you are going to do a silly mistake it is one of the reason hence again and uh, next reason is for example, you are solving some 10 problems continuously. You started the test and you are solving the 10 problems continuously. Yeah, you solved 10 problem. Oh my God, I solved 10 problem. I am going to get 80. I am going to get 90. Please stop that, that time itself. Don't cross your confidence level. Your confidence level has to be like this. It has to be maintained and it should not go over this. Or even it should not go under this also. I will say that. So if you are solving 10 problems and if you become more confident, if you are overconfident, then that is also going to bring you a lots of trouble. Because that over, overconfidence will uh, will cause you to think more. Oh, what is this? Uh, problems are very easy. I could solve the remaining problems very easily. That type of mentality will come. And obviously, after that, even if it is an easy problem also, it will be tough for you to solve. Right? The same way, you are solving the first problem. N not able to solve. Second problem, not able to solve. Third, not able to solve. It is going until 10th problem you are not able to solve. But again, I am repeating it. Don't go, don't go le uh, below your confidence level also. You should not reach under confidence level also. That is, you should not get disappointed. 10 problems is gone. No worries. Go and solve the 11th problem. You will get it. Surely you will get it. Or go and choose any problem randomly. You will get it. Surely you will get it. So one suggestion which I want to give you when, when you are facing this problem, that is when you are facing this trouble, continuously you cannot solve the problem. So 10 or 15 problems, you stuck. So I will suggest you, don't go, don't follow the random, don't follow the orderly manner, okay? 
Just go to any random problem and try to solve it. And that problem may be easy and that problem you might solve. So after, after solving every problem and again come back to this 15 problem, that time positively you will solve it. So your confidence level should be in level. It should be like this. It should not go above, it should not go below. Too. Keep this thing in your mind. This is a very important point. Okay. A uh, few points which I am discussing all are very important points. First one, draw it very clearly. Uh, first one is to write more tests, then only you will be able to find the mistakes. Draw a diagram very clearly. And one thing at a time, one task at a time, one question at a time. Don't think about the next question or don't think about the last question when you are solving this. So live in the present, don't think about past and don't think about future. And uh, next one is very important which I said, your confidence level should be maintained gradually. It, it should be a uh, straight line, it should be constant, it should not go above or it should not go below. Right? So what is the next point which I, which I was suggested to give is, um, try to do the problems in an orderly fashion. Don't do it here and there. I, I seen many, many students doing, if their paper is like this, the paper is like this, they will do one problem like this. They will start the problem here and they will end the problem here. And they will, and they will uh, mark it like this and they will solve next problem and they will mark it like this and they will solve next problem and they will mark it like this and that will be clumsy. Lots of clumsy work will be there. My suggestion is don't do this. You will be having a lots of paper in your, in the, in the notebook which they are giving to you. So enough paper will be there so you can surely accommodate it. Write a question here, solve it in a proper orderly manner. It is the only thing which will save your enormous time. You don't think that solving questions in the proper manner will consume more time. Don't think that. This will save enormous time. I will say you why. So for example, in the gate, 3 hours is not enough. You should finish off the paper within 2 hours. 65, 65 questions has to be solved within 2 hours. Remaining 1 hour is for revisiting all the questions. Okay. When you are revisiting the questions, that time, that time, if you solved the questions like this, for instance, instead of solving it properly, you solve like this, randomly, clumsily, if you solved the questions, then obviously you cannot revisit it properly, right? You cannot find which, which answer belong to which question, which solution belong to which question. It is, it is not easy. Seriously, it is not easy to find. So the only thing which you, which you want to do is, Right orderly, I am not saying that you should go, first question you, you should write, second question you should write. If you don't know the second question means leave one page and go for the third question. And solve third question, if you don't know the third question means go for randomly some 64th question, 65th question. But put the number perfectly, 64, 65, 50, put the number perfectly and solve for that only one question. You can take one side, one side for one, uh, one problem is more than, it's, it is probably good because Many theoretical questions will also be there. So only problematic questions you can take one side. Surely you can do. So this is the next suggestion. Try to do the problem properly in an orderly fashion. Right. So what is next suggestion is when you are starting to solve a problem, write the formula first. Okay. Positively you will be you will be you will be writing the given and one step, add one step, no issues. Add one formula step, formula step here. After writing the formula, substitute the given. Directly don't substitute the given without writing the formula. Write formula and again in the second step, substitute the given. This will also be very much useful when you are revisiting it. That time your silly mistakes can be avoided. Even though if you do any silly mistake now, when you are revisiting it, that time you can avoid the silly mistake. Every silly mistake can be avoided. So, uh, why I am saying is because if you write the formula and then if you substitute, when you are revisiting it, that time you might get, oh, I substituted in the wrong formula. You might get it. You might have substituted in the wrong formula. So, that time when you are revisiting it, that time you can easily find it out. And next, um, next important point is, once after, once after solving the problems, once completing the problem, reread the question. What does it mean by rereading the question? You would have solved the problem, you would have got the answer, even you would have ticked it, you even would have marked it, you would have marked it for marked A, B, or C, you would have marked it. But once after marking, reread the question. Whether what they are asking and what you what you had ticked are right or wrong. And what is the unit they asked and what is the unit which you substituted, whether it is right or wrong. These two things you need to do. 
reread the question and find what they are asking. Okay, they are asking this thing. Okay, I also found that thing only. And in which unit they are asking? Okay, in this unit. So I also found in that unit only. If you do this step, I can guarantee you that you can maximum reduce your mistakes because many mistakes are coming because of carelessness. If you are not caring about what is the question, then obviously you cannot write it, right? So see that and properly uh, when you are once finishing the problem, reread the question, reread what they asked, and reread what is the unit, and then enter it, okay? So these are all the few suggestions which I was supposed to give to you because there was a request and there was many, I, I, I seen many students, I seen many students in my institute where, where I am teaching, I seen many students are facing this difficulty too, uh, this difficulties too. So I was supposed to do this video so that it will be helpful for everyone. So we will see in the next video.